Hi, Sebastian Gorka, former de Deputy Assistant to Donald Trump. Thanks so much for your time. Do you think Donald Trump's worried at all about being impeached here? Well, no, they don't, they don't have the, the numbers, Laura. I mean, you have to have a supermajority. You have to have more than 66 votes in the Senate to impeach a president successfully. Uh, they don't have that. We had a vote two days ago on whether or not it is constitutional to try and impeach a man who isn't president anymore, who mm. can't be removed from his position in the White House. And 44 senators said, no, it is unconstitutional. The likelihood that you're going to have a significant number, more than a dozen, say, well, now it is constitutional, and I'm convinced it's not happening. This is a farce. It's a farrago. It's just a circus. Let's get to the future of Donald Trump in, in a moment, but let's go back to that day. How do you characterise what happened on Capitol Hill on January 6th? I don't need to characterise it. I was right there. I was in the front row of the ellipse outside the White House. I was 20 feet from my uh, boss, the president, and I heard him say the only thing, the only thing that the Democrats left out of their charges in the House and in the Senate, which is we are going to march peacefully and patriotically to Congress. The president said explicitly those words. That is the only thing they left out of their farrago, their tissue of lies. Why? because their case falls apart. They are accusing him of one article, insurrection to violence. When you say march peacefully, it's not violence, it's not insurrection. And I was there, I saw it, and I heard it with my own eyes and ears. Do you think Donald Trump has any role to play, or had any role in the events of that day, though? Words are one thing, actions and the environments which you create is another. Well, look, all I know is the following. Uh, we had the first ever conservative riot, if you will, in American history. That we, we don't have, conservatives don't do this. Conservatives don't breach security or go into secure areas. That's a, a leftist uh, tactic. What we have had, however, Laura, in the last 12 months in America is hundreds, and I mean literally hundreds of riots by Biden voters. Black Lives Matter and Antifa have rubbed, ridden roughshod over the cities of Seattle, Portland, Baltimore, even Washington, D.C., and Denver. Three billion, the insurance companies have estimated three billion dollars worth of damage by left-wing, quote-unquote, But if we, could, if we could concentrate 40, on the events 40, at the Capitol, on, though, Sebastian Gorg, I, I don't want to talk, I, I'll important. get to Antifa no, in a moment, no, but let's talk about the talk events about, on the Capitol. But, but you're asking me the question. Yeah, I, you... I, I've looked at your Twitter feed. You're not exactly the most unbiased reporter in the world, so I'm going to answer the question you gave me, OK? 40 people, 40 people were murdered by BLM and by Antifa rioters. Half of them were black Americans. Mm. Back then, what did the Democrats say? They incited the violence, said, oh, they said it's just. This is social justice. Kamala Harris, the current okay. vice president, raised the money to get people bailed out who had been burning down American cities. So you want to talk about incitement to violence? Let's talk about yep. it, but it's okay. coming from the but, left. Uh, look, there's many riots that we've seen across the United States, but I want to talk about that day. Could Donald Trump do. have stopped it? <laughs> Could Donald Trump has, have stopped it? I think what we saw at Capitol Hill shocked the world. It's even shocked some of Trump's supporters. Well, you did. I mean, get your facts straight. After the violent events occurred, he went instantly to Facebook and recorded a, 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 a video to tell people, go home. After it occurred. You know That's the key you know point, the though, isn't it, Sebastian Gorka? After it occurred. There's many, okay. there's many you know newspaper Zuckerberg articles did? that say Mark that they had advisor CEO, after advisor Laura, leading Laura, him to make a statement. A question or, or, or get a patsy on, OK? If you want somebody to agree with your anti-Trump rhetoric, don't ask me on your show, OK? The president said, go home in peace on a Facebook video that Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, deleted because he said it incited violence, incited violence. Then Jack Dorsey 
deleted completely Donald Trump's Twitter feed with 90 million followers. You want to talk about people who are hiding the truth? It's not on the right, it's on the left. Well, thanks for coming on my show because it looks like you're, you're crawling for a fight. What I want to ask you, and what I don't really understand is... Why, well, that's, that's, that's kind of cheap. You know, that, that's, that's, that's kind can of I ask cheap. a question? Can well, I ask why a did question? you do that? As a conservative, as a conservative, as a conservative, I'm often like I'm that, often that confused as to why you saw support Donald Trump without any criticism at all. He's the antithesis of conservatism, isn't he? Why, why would you do that? Why, why would you do such a cheap shot? I, I, I'm kind of spoiling for a fight. Is that journalism, Laura? You've got your no, own show. You, you know, can come on here. I just want to. I, I just want to ask you you're being, questions. You're being a okay. Hat. Okay. Let me ask you a straight question. Do you think the election was rigged? I think we have thousands of examples of serious problems, sworn affidavits from truck drivers who were forced to commit felonies by shipping a hundred thousand ballots across state lines. We have video. Don't 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 ask me if there are problems. We have video footage from polling stations in Georgia mm. that the workers pulled out suitcases of ballots from hiding places under tables only after the Republican poll watchers were escorted out of the building. Yeah, we had serious problems. We had 80 million mail out ballots mm. sent unrequested out. But isn't this that the is same system that saw Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton? No, no. Are, are you kidding? Come on. We, we didn't have 80 million ballots mail, mailed out. We didn't have we didn't have Democrat governors such as in Virginia say, when you mail in a ballot, I am decreeing unconstitutionally that we're not going to check the veracity of the signature on the mailed in ballot against mm. the voter rolls to see whether it is actually the person voting. Why yeah. would you do that unless you want to cheat? Why would a Democrat governor like Ralph Northam say, for the first time in American history, we're not going to check somebody's signature? Only if you want to cheat. Come on. Well, what do you think Donald Trump does next? Have you spoken to him? Does he want to even run in, in 2024? Is age simply a barrier here? <laughs> age? I'm 50 years old. He's 73. When I worked for him in the White House, man, it, it, I couldn't keep up with him. That guy sleeps two and a half hours a day. He has more energy than most 25-year-olds. If he wants to run in 2024, he's going to make that decision. Yes, I have spoken to him. We stay in touch. He's very, very loyal to those who are loyal to him. Mm. Look, it doesn't matter what he decides to do because he is the de facto conservative kingmaker. There is nobody. Nobody in America as powerful as Donald Trump, despite him leaving the White House. There is nobody who can say, tomorrow, I'm going to be in this stadium in Poughkeepsie and fill it with 50,000 Americans. And nobody. Biden, the senile cretin, I mean, seriously, yeah. he, he is the conservative movement and he is the de facto kingmaker. Something that's always puzzled me is as we sit here, American America looks particularly divided, more divided than it has been in some time. And this is after four years of the Trump presidency. And I think you just said it there, loyalty. This seems to be the key word. Are you blindly loyal to Trump, wherefore you can't see his faults? That's an ad hominem attack. Why, why would you use a statement such as, are you blindly loyal? That, that's kind of cheap, isn't it? Is that journalism? Mm, I'll not really. Tell you one thing. I just as child, do you criticise Donald Trump for anything. Child, no one's above criticism. No one's above as criticism. Child, I just wonder if you child, think there's anything he could have done differently. He could have improved if he wants to run for let president me answer, again. What, uh, let me answer your question. I support this man inside the White House, outside the White House, for a very simple reason. My parents as children suffered under fascist dictatorship. Then my father was arrested, tortured, and imprisoned by communists. Mm. I grew up under Margaret Thatcher, and I looked at Ronald Reagan as a great American leader. We have never had as conservative and as great an American leader since maybe World War II. This is the man that crushed ISIS, put Russia back in its box, 
gave the green light to target 200 Russian mercenaries in Syria and mm. created the greatest American economy since the history of economic metrics began, mm. the lowest unemployment for blacks and Hispanics in America, a man who was more pro-life. And this is a sad statement of fact, because I love Ronald Reagan, more pro-life than Ronald Reagan, the first ever president to personally mm. speak at the March for Life. This is a great man and a great president, and that's why I support him. It's got nothing to do with his personality. It's mm -hmm. what he achieved in the scant four years he had in office. This man will go down in history as one of the greatest American presidents, period. And yet he's left America, the divided states of America, in many views. Left it divided? Are you kidding me? Beijing Biden comes into office giving a speech on Inauguration Day about peace and unity. Mm. And what does he do? He allows his Democrat colleagues to begin an illegal, unconstitutional impeachment of a man who has left office and is a private citizen. Let's remind everybody, nobody, not Abraham Lincoln, not George Washington, not Eisenhower, no incumbent president received as many votes as Donald Trump. 74 million Americans voted for Donald Trump. And you want to bring unity by trying to convict that man mm. in a trumped up show trial? Well, just That's let me ask you outrage. one last Those question. Uh, just uh, what environment do Trump supporters, um, Proud Boys, QAnon supporters, see that they are an environment, they have an environment, they have fertile ground to force their way into the Capitol building. I'm just trying to understand how that happens, under what leadership, under what commander-in-chief? What do you mean, what commander-in-chief? These are private citizens. I, I think you're mixing your terms. Donald Do Trump was the commander-in-chief of the US the, Armed Forces. He was president at the time, if you remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I worked in the White House. Those are yeah. private citizens that went into Congress. What are you blathering about? Well, did, he was the president. Doesn't he yeah. create an environment so, so, which so he, is he, is, is, is he also, think that's okay? Is he, is he, so Bernie Sanders had a volunteer who tried to murder Steve Scalise and shot him in the hip, almost I killing think, him I think on a baseball field. Is Bernie Sanders, is Bernie Sanders, is Bernie Sanders responsible? Is Bernie Sanders responsible for what his what his supporter did on a baseball diamond not far from where I'm sitting? He tried to kill every Republican politician with an SKS rifle on a baseball Doesn't field. Doesn't it say everything that is, you is are Bernie obfuscating and that you can't answer that question? No, I'm using exactly the same logic you're using, which is absurd. Uh, the Donald Trump is not responsible for the Ill illegal acts of private citizens. But he wasn't a private citizen. I mean, he was president at the time. It was for the, the people the, who the went into Congress. Oh, my Lord. The people who went into Congress were private citizens. How is he mm. their commander in chief? They're and they say Donald Trump is his, uh, their leader. Is their leader? Oh my gosh! You need you need to go back to school, my dear. Seriously. Okay. Well, Seb Gorker, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Let's return home now. Developing news out of Victoria: the Holiday Inn cluster remaining at eight cases.